Well, here we are taking steps to reopen church, or I should say, have in-person worship. But here are some steps that we'll have to follow, given the guidelines of CDC, um, New York State Department of Health, but also our Metro New York Synod and the wider ELCA. You should have received one of these in the mail, if not by an email. Uh, this offers a full rundown as to how we can how we can get ourselves ready to safely engage in worship back here at St. James and Matthew. So what I'll do right now is remove this, but I wanted to let you see how it's being worn. Not like how you've seen all the people. This here is fit snug across your nose, so it's covering your nose and your mouth, and it's adjusted around your ear, depending on your size. So I'm gonna remove this now so I can talk a little clearer as we get ready to go through some of the important steps in resuming in-person worship here at church. So as you enter, as you would have seen, you will come here and this is the check-in station, which, in which first of all, you'll be testing your, getting your temperature tested by one of these. And the readout will tell you if you're in that acceptable range or not. Now that's a very important part because if you're not well, we strongly advise or we, we would say that you should not be a part of our worship. Not only for your safety, but for the safety of your church family at this time. Now, the second thing to do, we have to do is to have a, a checklist or a, a short questionnaire, a four question questionnaire to tell us about where you've been in the last couple of weeks. But more than that, give us critical information with regards to tracing and tracking if there is a need. And now let us be clear on this. This is important so that the person sitting next to you, although more than six feet apart inside of church, will be notified in the event that something happens to you or you are two weeks from now, three weeks from now, you're diagnosed with COVID-19. So that's important for us to understand. And so this is a must as you come into worship. So there are two things, a must, a mask, and these questionnaires as we get ready for worship. Now, if you do not have a mask, we have a few extras here, but we strongly recommend that you bring your own because everybody is different. If you have your own brand, your style, whatever, if it's a mask, a surgical mask, or a, a face covering, make sure you bring your own. But in the event that you do not have one or it broke along the way, we will have one for you upon entering the portion. You also have a, a few sanitary gloves here, if you so desire. I have not been using them, especially during the summertime, because it's a lot of sweaty, but I do wash my hands as often as possible. So I'm saying that, and you pass the checklist, or you, you pass your test, the temperature test, you know, now we'll proceed into the sanctuary for worship. So, as you enter into the sanctuary, the name here will have to be clear, because there will be no congregating as you enter and as you exit after worship. So these arrows are giving us some direction as to how you proceed into the building. Now uh, that there are two sanitizers, hand sanitizers over here for your use or as you continue to keep yourselves clean throughout your time here at St. James and Matthews. There are also two stations. One over here that has to have a, an offering plate for your envelopes and over here would be one with the communion aspects which we'll talk about shortly. So as you enter you will notice two signs. The first one is do not sit here. Well that means do not sit. And 
The other one is, please sit here. They'll be placed on each pew. So as you usher into your seat, a vacant seat of course, you will come in and you will notice, please sit here. And you also have a worship bulletin next to where you should be seated. Now you'll be remain seated throughout the worship service. And mind you, there will be no need for you to stand to have some responses during the service, nor sharing of the peace. We'll get to the sharing of the peace in a little bit. But remember, you'll be ushered to your seat and you'll be seated there for the duration of the worship service. Now as you leave, you will leave towards the side aisle. So if you're sitting on the right side, you will go to the extreme right to the side aisle. And the same goes for the those sitting on the left side of the church. As you exit, you exit to the side aisle. Leave the entryway for the, the middle aisle for the entryway as you come into work. So we're into worship now, and you'll be reminded constantly to remain seated throughout the worship service. Mind you, it will be shorter than our regular in normal time Sunday, but it will be close to the same time that we have right now during the pandemic. So we're trying to keep it to that same time, time, time span. Now, you, while you remain seated, there will be no singing as well. The singing, if we have singing, will be done by just one person in the corner by the piano, in the far corner by the piano. That will be farther away as possible from any, any of us. And that's strictly guidelines from CDC. Yes, the organist will be playing, or the pianist. We will have music but there will be no singing throughout the worship service. As to the passing of the peace, you know there will be no touching of each other, hugging, kissing, shaking hands. However, you can gesture like this and nod to the person you're sharing your peace with. At the appropriate distance, of course, while you are seated in your pew. Don't worry, we'll go over this again as we get right into worship. But for now, just keep in mind, you'll be seated throughout the worship service. There will be no singing by the congregation, no responses by the congregation out loud, nor there will be no sharing of the peace in the traditional way. A word about Holy Communion during this time of pandemic. You probably notice that it will be very different from what we would have had at a regular Sunday morning. But it's not that different because you have your own individual glass here, but with grape juice. And there is a small way for seal into this packaging. Now, right after they're celebrated at the, at the altar, they will be transported to the back here and it'll be placed right here. Now, before you leave, and as you leave individually, you will take one, and these are some nice bags provided here for you. Drop it in, seal it, and take it with you. Because you will be communing yourself when you get at home, after you take off your mask. So, we've gathered for worship, we've thanked God for preserving us during this time, but as we leave, remember you leave by the side aisles, and as you leave, remember to get one of those packaged, prepackaged wafers and grape juice in that little bag, so when you go home and you take off your mask, you can partake of the Lord's Supper. Now, as you leave, remember there will, there will be no fellowship as we know it. There will be no gathering outside on the sidewalk. There will be no gathering at the restaurants. Because I hope and pray that you will continue to observe the social 
distancing, the physical distancing prescribed by our health officials during this time. But more than that, I want to assure you that we will gather in a safe environment, a clean environment, and week after week, this place will be clean and sanitized as prescribed by our health guidelines. So do your part, we will do our part, and together, I pray that we will get through this together. I want to take a moment and say a quick thank you to Matthew, who was behind the camera, of course, to make this possible, and for your continued patience during this time, as we wait and we watch for that day when we will all be together again, worshiping as a family of St. James and Matthew Church. Until then, may God's peace be with you.